Good morning, everyone. Just gonna let people in for another minute. Just observing the quality of light wherever you are. It's real smoky where I am. I'm not sure what's going on, but it's very smoky out here. I was reading that we're uh, in a La Nina cycle with the weather. I might have already said this, but part of that is like wind. And um, so it makes fires more of a problem. And I feel like there've been a lot of fires around here. All right. So we are uh, on day 16, which is amazing. And today what we're going to do is we are going to look at, at um, the app that I, the other app I had told you all about called Co-Alarm. I'm really hoping that somebody somewhere out there is actually techie and comes up with an even better solution than this, though Co-Alarm is, is fine. It's, a, it's, it works. Co-Alarm lets you program your own voice to be the alarm. So when you go into your Co-Alarm to program your voice, you're going to be able to record yourself saying whatever you want to say. Um, that's really cool because if we are now in this rhythm of getting up around sunrise and this is the default, our body has started to trust that this is our default. What's happening is we are now producing melatonin early in the day with the blue light of the rising sun, which is when we're supposed to like, we're, we only make melatonin early in the morning. We use it later in the day, but we make it early in the morning. So now our body is starting to trust. It's starting to trust that we're going to get up in time to see the light. I'm actually gonna take my glasses off. I don't need to see the screen. Uh, it's trusting that we're going to get up in time to see the light, to make a good amount of melatonin. So the, the body is no longer concerned that it's not going to have the opportunity to make enough melatonin. So it starts to use your melatonin to push your sleep, the activation of sleep as the sun starts to set, as it gets darker. And then it uses more of the melatonin throughout the night while you're sleeping, which is important for us to stay asleep. Again, things are going to throw this off drinking, changing your sleeping pattern. What we're looking for is, is this the pattern for you? Is your body starting to be able to trust that we're going to be up in the morning to get melatonin? When the answer is yes to that, when, when the body starts to trust that you are going to be up in the morning to get the melatonin production that you need from the blue light with the no UV rays because there's no ultraviolet rays first thing in the morning. It's all far infrared. It was, it goes, oh, great. Okay. I know I'm going to get that melatonin. I don't have to parcel it out quite as stingily. So what that also translates to is you're going to start having more, um, more melatonin in the brain while you're entering deep layers of sleep. Melatonin is also connected to the production of DMT. DMT comes from the pineal gland. So all of these systems, all of these experiences are connected. When we don't have enough melatonin, we aren't going to be able to get enough DMT to have the really trippy dreams that we have where you know, whatever you believe, I personally use dreams to travel to other dimensions and to have really cool visualizations. But even if you don't believe that you're traveling to other dimensions or doing any of that kind of stuff, the DMT in your dreams is what gives you the dreams that allow you to see what's happening in your subconscious. So even if it's just like, that's cool, 
the other benefit of this is that in order to do that, in order for your body to effectively be releasing melatonin, you have to be in a certain brain state. And so as we are going from sleeping to waking, we hit this liminal state and this liminal state is really juicy and really good because in that liminal state, our brain is incredibly susceptible to being reprogrammed. So this happens right before you fall asleep. So a lot of Buddhist traditions talk about like the, the things that you think about before you go to sleep. Um, and then this is also why in, in a lot of Buddhist and Hindu traditions, actually more than that, it's kind of, there's a lot of traditions that do this. You will wake up at 4 a.m. And, and pray for an hour before the sun rises or meditate for an hour before the sun rises. Because if you can use that liminal space of I'm not fully awake yet, but I'm not asleep. I'm kind of in that in between. That is how you talk to your subconscious. And we all know that everything that happens to us, like everything that we experience in the physical body, everything that we feel throughout the day is coming first through the thought realm. So our thoughts create what we experience, what we experience creates an emotional reaction to that experience. That emotional reaction is then displayed in our brains as a chemical. That chemical then creates a response from the body again. So it goes to your thoughts, then the thoughts are going to lead to a thought. The thought is going to lead to the experience. The experience is going to create an emotion. The emotion is going to imprint the body. The body is then going to suggest that to the thought realm the next time that a similar situation comes up. And the only way to really access that is to either one, just build new patterns, which is what we're doing with the sunrise meditation. We're going, okay, well, we're just going to train the brain to know that this is the new normal. You can also go in and talk to the subconscious and you can learn the language of the subconscious and you can tell the subconscious we're going to do something different. The best time to do that is right before you fall asleep and right after you wake up, because that is when you have pure access to the subconscious state because there's just enough melatonin. It's just right before the cortisol is starting to be released to fully wake you up. So when you hear your own voice first thing in the morning, when you hear your own voice before you're fully awake, subconscious mind doesn't recognize that it's separate from itself. Even though you're hearing it from an external mechanism, subconscious mind doesn't doesn't understand that. So the benefit of waking yourself partially up with this alarm talking to you is that you can then start to put messages in your own subconscious about things that you want to be different in your life. So here's how that looks. We've done this a few times in meditation and in, in the mornings now, where I tell you to project yourself to the end of the day and have a memory of what happened that day. Okay. We want to use that technique when we're programming what we're going to say into co-alarm. So you want to talk to your subconscious like or as a thing has already changed. So you might say, remember that today you were the healthiest you've ever been. Okay. What that does is it's like a double whammy because now you're talking directly to the subconscious and you're using language with the subconscious that says, duh, subconscious, you should have already known this. And subconscious has no reason not to trust the programming that's coming in at that time, especially if it's from your own voice. So it's going to go, oh, oh yeah, my bad. Yep. Should have already known that. You're right. My bad. My bad. Right. So this is a really powerful tool for those of you who, who do affirmations um, or who do early morning meditations. This is, I feel like this practice is sort of like a, it's like a really easy way to get those benefits without having to do either like a really intense meditation practice super early in the morning or, um, without repeating the affirmations throughout the whole entire day. And you can certainly still do that. You could repeat this however many times you wanted. And that's great because eventually repetition will start to program the brain, but repetition takes a lot longer than just 
well-timed precision. So <clears throat> today or this weekend, I want you to think about, sorry, it's really smoky. It's like starting to affect my throat. I want you to think about what you can program, what you want to program into your co-alarm. Now, if you want to start this weekend, great. Um, if you don't want to start this weekend, also great. But I would say my challenge is to, on Monday, be set up to start your week with this new co-alarm message that's going to wake you up. Now, the next question that's already come up is, what if I don't wake up to that alarm? It doesn't really matter to start. For now, I would say just see if you can figure out a way to have it playing right before you would want to get out of bed. So because we're all doing the sunrise challenge and that's at 5 a.m. PST, you would want to set this for depending on how long you take to roll out of bed before you get here. Let's say you tend to get here right at five and you kind of roll out of bed at 445 and just stumble out. Maybe set this to start going off at 4, 415 you could probably even go 430, right? Just starting to get used to what it's like to have your own voice being a thing that your subconscious is hearing first thing in the morning. Um, I also have had somebody ask me, well, what am I supposed to say? And you're supposed to say whatever it is that you would like to transform in your life. So if you can't think of anything, like if you're like, my life is perfect, then great. You could literally say, remember that today was another day of perfection. I, it doesn't matter. The thing is, you're just going to then be reaffirming how great things are for yourself right now in your subconscious. So you can do health. You know, you can literally start to reprogram spiritual DNA. Like you can start to reprogram your body simply by talking to your subconscious mind because all of those processes are connected because emotions, body, thoughts, feelings, epigenetics, they're all connected and they all meet in the subconscious. So you can reprogram health things. You can reprogram wealth things. If you feel like you aren't attracting abundance, you can say, remember how, uh, how magnetically abundant you were today. And then you might describe a little bit what that looks like, or maybe that's enough to trigger it for you. Uh, relationships. Remember that today you did the work to create a life that will support the perfect partner. Whatever it is that you want to work on or call in, you can program that. There's no right or wrong. Um, I'm fully expecting to have questions about this. So I will I think what's going to happen is I'm going to do the Q and a, um, probably Wednesday. Nope. I'll get back to you guys on that. I can never remember what my schedule at the clinic is right now. Um, but I will do a Q and a next week so that if anybody has any trouble with this, we can talk about it again. If somebody is watching this or listening and they're like, oh, I found an even better app or I found an even better way to do this, to wake up hearing the sound of your voice, I am so here for that. I'm not a techie person. So I found CoAlarm and I was like, yay, good job me, CoAlarm. Okay. So we're going to practice right now before we leave, we're going to practice what it's like to project yourself into the future and remember what happened today. So Right now, before we go into this short guided meditation, just take a second to think about what you want today to look like. You know, do you have a big meeting that you need to get ready for? Do you need to be productive? Um, do you, are you feeling particularly tired today and you want to have energy? Do you have a conversation with family or friends that you need to anticipate? Just think about what you want today to look like. Just high level. You don't have to have like the clear visualization for it yet. We're going to do that in meditation but just high level, what do you want your day to look like? And then we will go ahead and look for your Eastern horizon. And allow the eyes to relax out into the distance
and just get settled. Now I want you to visualize yourself at the very end of your day. Start to look at what that routine looks like for you. Work is done, dishes are done, dinner is done. We are headed towards the bathroom to get ready for bed. I'm gonna assume everybody brushes their teeth at night. So we're moving into the bathroom to brush our teeth. Are you alone? Are you with a partner? What does it look like? You see yourself brushing your teeth washing your face, putting your hair into a wrap, whatever you do. And you make your way finally to bed and you climb into bed and do whatever rituals you have there. Maybe you talk to your partner, cuddle for a little bit. Maybe you're sleeping alone. So you read for a minute or you say a prayer, whatever it is you do at night, put the tuck the pets in. I know some people sleep with their pets. And I want you to visualize yourself. You're closing your eyes and you're closing your eyes for sleep and you feel your body is getting heavy. So we're not closing our eyes in real life. We're going to try to do this with our eyes open because we don't want to deny any of that good light. And also I fully believe that all of you can do this with your eyes open. If you do have to close your eyes, it's no big deal, but try it with your eyes open. You feel yourself getting tired, you close your eyes. And I want you to think back on the day. I want you to think back to that thing that you decided before we started this practice. And I want you to just visualize it being exactly what you wanted it to be. And now sometimes the mind can come in and try to change the narrative or show you where the problems were, make it hard. And you can just say, no, thank you. And you can just go back to reconstructing this memory of exactly the way you want it to go. So if mind starts to come in and try to create strife or trouble or another narrative, you just say, no, thank you. And know you have that ability. So just visualize. Today, I was centered all day long. Today, I helped my client to release their trauma that was keeping them from enjoying their life. Today, I took good care of myself by getting a massage, allowing myself to receive. And because of that, right now, as I'm laying in bed, remembering these things, I feel so good about my day, right? That's what this practice looks like. And then of course, if we can calling in gratitude, I'm so grateful for the day that I had today. I'm so grateful that I was able to show up for my client. I'm so grateful that I was able to find the self-care that I needed. So pulling that gratitude in. Awesome. So practice this. This is what I want you to practice. Find whatever your message is going to be for yourself and you can re-record it, right? So you can have one message for one day. You can keep it for a week. You can keep it for a month. You can keep it for a year. It's totally up to you. Figure out what you want that to look like. Again, if you want to start this weekend, great. If you don't, if you want to wait until Monday, because you know that your practice tends to be more consistent during the week, that's also okay. Okay. We're not here for judgment. We're just here to create new habits and to reap the bounty of the sun's beautiful rays. Um, also, I would love to hear from anybody in the Q&A if everybody can make it. Maybe I'll do like an evening one how the practice is going, how we're doing with getting sun throughout the day as well, adding that in. Um, if you've noticed any changes to your body or mind or emotions and, um, yeah, I think that's it. You guys are doing awesome. I can't believe even this many people are still on, on the screen in the mornings, given, um, that we're now 16 days in and it's really hard to do anything for 16 days. So I'm really proud of you all because you are choosing to show up because you are choosing yourself. You are teaching your brain 
that you can do hard things and that you are worth the time that you are putting into this and the focus that you're putting into this. So I am of course grateful and happy to see all of your faces here. And I'm also just really happy for you that you are developing this relationship with yourself. So carry that with you into your day. I will see you all here on Monday morning. Um, as always, you know, I had to double check it was Friday. Reach out with any questions, comments, or concerns. Har mariese.